many ways, the existence of nation states seems to suggest some sort of consensus. And even though, I mean, we kind of know how that consensus was arrived at, yes, through colonialism yep. and other forms of um, oppression, but nonetheless, some sort of consensus in a world that is now so fractured. How do we find our way back to having a conversation that reaches to a consensus that enables us to question what is and try to dismantle it and maybe build something different? <laughs> I don't think it's, I think it's possible, but I don't think it's plausible uh, for, for us to have that kind of conversation at this moment. One, we think through categories. We are creatures of categories. We're creatures of habit. I don't know that we even know what it is to live outside nation states. Um, we don't know how to think. We barely even know how to think of education outside of schooling, right? And, and here is here's the problem then, that what we need is um, something beyond our uh, genius, something outside of human uh, programs and projects and manifestos. We need a way of thinking about this that is about meeting the world at large, right? It, it, it's, it, it's not about appealing to the nation state or the global nation state order. And I want to say as well that, that um, the nation state was not consensual. Um, it, it, it still remains an imposition of a particular way of being in the world. Um, it's a recent invention. It hasn't always existed, right? Uh, before, um, after kingdoms, kingdoms like Croatia and all of that, um, the, the global nation state order as exists today came on the heels of this, the First World War and the Second World War. So the, there's something militaristic and violent built into the current contraption of nation states. Um, and this is how we live today. My thinking about this, and I'm not alone in thinking this way, is that it's not the existence of the nation state as a political unit is being tested by more than human elements in the world today. The pandemic has shown us that the nation state as a political unit is not as efficacious as we think it is. The fact that we have been flying ourselves to conferences across the world for 70, 60, 70 years now to address climate change, and yet we still do not know how to get our act together, tells us that the idea of the nation state as the central acting force, you know, the shelf life is dying. Okay. And so we need to find ways, post-nationalist cracks, ways of acting with each other that transcends those enacted boundaries, those linear boundaries. Yeah, I can speak more about that. Okay, so, so Dr. Bayo, um, speaking about nation states, um, as you earlier mentioned, in Nigeria and many other countries actually, and there seems to be these otherness within the within, right? So um, there's a Christian, mm -hmm. Muslim, illiterate, um, literate. Um, how do we as a people um, navigate this, these differences um, while trying to function as a cohesive nation? Because we do exist as a nation state, right? And yeah. it's the reality. And I, I, I doubt if it's going to change anytime soon. Um, so, so how right. how do we who, who how do tell? we navigate, navigate these differences and and function as a you know as a good nation for lack of a better term <laughs> good yeah not good but yeah well I don't know if we can function as a good nation but I know we can function as good neighbors okay. right I, I I think I think that's the that's the the fugitive invitation right now that we can we can function as good neighbors, we can function as brothers, we can function in ways that may not even have a language yet. And this happens every time, you know, beneath the gaze of media, beneath the uh, extrapolations of giant intra, international institutions. We are connecting in ways that are not always noticeable. The, the, the idea is finding where we um, share common failures and common desires and common aspirations and then connecting, building a politics around this. I might evoke the um, transatlantic um, communities 
um, the African com diaspora communities on the heels of slavery um, that emerged away from home. And how did they emerge? And how did they thrive under the boots of oppression? By finding ways to build home underneath their colon the colonial master's gaze. They found ways to connect with each other. These are disparate African communities. They actually built new religions, Candomblé, Santeria, different ways of thinking about the world, different technologies. They built Gayap economical cultures. They built Rastafari. They built new musical genres. All of this was um, a way of connecting that did not depend on the nation state apparatus. Um, but they found a way to connect with each other. And I feel that that's what we need to start doing today. If we find or if we build a politics that is about being recognized by the nation state, that is about appealing to Asso Rock or appealing to City Hall, whatever City Hall uh, means, wherever you are, then we will run the risk of repeating the trauma that we haven't yet addressed that keeps on haunting us as a nation. So yes, my brother, we are a nation state and it might seem that we're gonna be a nation state for a while longer um, even though there's this prophecy that Nigeria has come to its near end. Um, but I feel what we need to do right now might be the precursor for what the world is going to try to do um, in, in some years, perhaps in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. We need to find ways to connect with each other um, al along the paths and algorithms of our failure, of our desires, of our wants, of our new questions in the face of large geological shifts and changes in the world.